still struggling to put his last minute slides together. And Mark is preoccupied showing tours, I think, still, so I've been asked to start the session off. What this afternoon's session is about the demonstrators. So we're looking at the real parts um, and looking at what they've learned and what they've seen from the, uh, the process and all the stuff we've heard this morning. And the first off is Florence, Florence de Monstron for Thales, um, looking at sunsets and the tenebra and tenebra. Is the microphone working? Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, so good afternoon. Uh, sorry to interrupt your lunch break. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, present, uh, in fact, one of the application pods that we have uh, developed in the frame of this project. Uh, so I am uh, the representative of uh, Thales Salinia Space. We are making satellites. So what you will see is an application for uh, space. Uh, I'm also part of the Thales group who was involved uh, deeply in this project with uh, not less than four airports. So we have chosen to present to you this one, which is the more uh, complete, but we have been also involved in some uh, other uh, activities. Um, this is a collaborative project. So as you see, we had a lot of contributors to this work. So we thank all the people involved in the project about this um, activity on this uh, space applications. Uh, so yes, I said it was a satellite application. This is a, a view of a typical uh, satellite for observation and, and science. Uh, the objective for a space application within the AMAZE project were for us uh, first to uh, assess the benefit that we could have with this technology, uh, meaning uh, what kind of uh, benefit we could have in terms of design, of course, in terms of the performance of the part, especially with the weight, which is so important for us. Uh, because the launching costs are related to the weight of the satellite. Uh, we also uh, took the opportunity here in this project to uh, build the same part with different uh, manufacturing strategy, and it was the opportunity to evaluate the performances uh, of uh, each of these parts and to see if they have some common performances. And of course, the third objective was to demonstrate uh, if we could um, uh, use uh, LBM technology as uh, uh, space uh, for space applications, uh, if it meets, if this technology can meet our requirements. This is the table of content for the presentation, I'll scrap it. Um, so the application case that we have chosen to uh, study here is this uh, um, uh, a part which is traditionally uh, made of uh, three assembled uh, machined parts that are bonded together with a specific uh, jig. As I said, it's a, a support for uh, sun sensors, which are uh, two small equipments looking like cubes uh, with about 24 grams, I would say, as a, a mass, and also supporting a conic uh, antenna for um, communication with the ground. Uh, which is also supported in the center of, of this part. Uh, so uh, this uh, application case was interesting because it was made of uh, three different parts, and the objective here was to try to design a, 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 um, a single block uh, part uh, fulfilling the same uh, functionality. Uh, we had a requirement about the material for this application case. We had to stay with aluminum. A traditional part was made of aluminum with a 7075 uh, alloy. Uh, we needed to keep aluminum because of the thermal conductivity of the material that was needed for this satellite application. Um, the specificity of the current part is also that due to the bonding that we had between the three uh, different parts, uh, we lost the, the uh, electrical conductivity. So we had to uh, add an electrical braid to make the grounding of the part. So we expect also with this uh, new approach with additive, with a single block design, to get rid of all these uh, drawbacks of the traditional technology. So we expect a weight benefit. We expect to have a, a schedule reduction, maybe, we, thanks to the uh, uh, removal of the assembly step. Uh, and we also would like to, with this study, to evaluate if there is a performance increase or even a cost benefit with this technology. Uh, we decided to, um, to choose the LBM technology, LBM for laser beam technology based on the powder bed and uh, um, laser as a power source uh, because we uh, target quite complex shapes and it was the only technology available 
to reach such a complexity in terms of shape. So the first step that we performed in the project was the redesign step. Uh, so we took uh, uh, the requirements, uh, especially for the from the mechanical point of view. Uh, the first step is to define a CAD uh, volume like this. Uh, you just uh, define uh, the, the allow allowable volume uh, with the uh, interfaces that are imposed by the rest of the system. Uh, you then apply uh, some load cases uh, to, uh, to this uh, volume with a dedicated software called optimization software, topological optimization software. In our case, it was a Nastran uh, software. Uh, this uh, kind of software, it was a little bit explained this morning by David, uh, will keep only uh, the um, material where it is needed. I mean, we will keep only the, the load path in the, in the port. Uh, the software delivers only this kind of um, very rough uh, geometry. Uh, so the second step will be to smooth this geometry with traditional uh, CAD software or even adapted ones to get some um, uh, bars and some curves where they are needed. Uh, then there is a third step that is illustrated uh, uh, in the top of the slide, which is adaptation of the design to the process. Here we have a LBM process. We know with that we have to support, for example, all the bars that are less than 45 degrees C from the building plate um, plane. Uh, so we have adapted the shapes. Uh, for example, here there is a kind of uh, water drop shape uh, in order to limit uh, the number of support. It's better than if you have to support a simple cylinder. You just do a, a shape like this to have only one light support uh, for LBM process. Then after these uh, uh, design activities that were performed in relation with the manufacturers, then we um, have uh, done the traditional work of uh, fine element analysis to have the part mechanically uh, analyzed and check that with our own design rules that are coming from space standards and also our own experience about uh, additive and about also uh, traditional techniques uh, to meet the, the requirements that we had fixed in our design rules, meaning that we don't want that the part is submitted, submitted to uh, too high uh, stre uh, stress uh, everywhere, uh, in every location in the parts. Um, so at the end, we obtained a design that was uh, compliant with all uh, our requirements in terms of uh, mechanical loads. And uh, this design uh, was uh, then achieved with a single block solution, which was the, the aim of this uh, design exercise. Uh, we had a weight reduction that was more than 50%. That's a lot. Uh, and we also managed to uh, put uh, into the design the connector bracket that was originally separated. We integrated uh, directly into uh, the design. Uh, and we, we had the surprise to reach this weight reduction, which is really high, uh, despite the fact that we moved from a structural alloy, a 7000 series, to a casting alloy which has um, very lower characteristics in terms of uh, mechanical uh, behavior. So um, the, the, the weight benefit is really uh, important in this case. Uh, then we uh, switch to the manufacturing step. So thanks to all the manufacturing partners that were involved in the project, we had the opportunity uh, to make four parts with the same design we have uh, sent the CAD file to uh, different manufacturers, and we had at the end uh, four parts manufactured each time with a different machine, with a different strategy, uh, but with all the same alloy. It was ALSI 10, and also with the same heat treatment. It was a stress relief, two hours at 300 degrees C. Uh, each of uh, the manufacturing scenario also uh, was different about the surface finishing. We ask only for sandblasting, and each manufacturer has applied his own uh, internal procedures. So you can see uh, all the parts that have been manufactured. Two of them were manufactured uh, by Renishaw, uh, one with an older system, 
the second one with um, a new uh, system uh, with the AM500 machine. Uh, the part three was manufactured by Concept Laser with a very large machine called the X-Line uh, 1000R with a high power laser. And the, third, the fourth one was uh, built by University of Birmingham with the new SLM 500. Uh, so you see there, there was really different uh, laser power, different strategies. We didn't interfere with the strategies about supporting and we have received the four parts for, to be tested. So this is the test plan. Um, we have decided to do uh, all this. Uh, of course, once we, we build a part, we always um, put also in the job some uh, um, witness samples. Usually it's some um, micro cut uh, samples, uh, small cubes or small bars, and also some tensile strength samples. Uh, it's this way we can uh, ensure that um, the mechanical properties in the parts are as high as expected. So uh, we had to uh, test these um, uh, tensile uh, samples. Uh, we are looking at the ultimate strength, your strength, young modulus, and also just for information, the elongation. Uh, we also uh, observe the mechanical, uh, the dynamic behavior, mechanically speaking, with vibration testing that were performed in house in Salina Space in Cannes. Uh, some, um, a lot of uh, other testing have been done by. Uh, ESA collaboration with uh, such as microscopic observations, CT scan, uh, also uh, CTE. Uh, and we have also performed cleanliness, thermal uh, cycling, and electrical conductivity check. I will detail a little bit the results of uh, this test plan. So the tensile, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the tensile uh, testing. Uh, for, uh, for these um, results, we have put only the average values and the standard deviation. The standard deviation is quite high, it's quite normal because we had different processes and uh, also different um, shapes for the samples. There were some wrong, there were some flat because the, our standard is more flat and the MA standard was round. Um, the round specimen were also all machined. Uh, but even if we put all the results together in this uh, table, uh, we can see that they are very close in average values of what we have taken as hypothesis for the design of, uh, of the parts. So that's a good point. Uh, what we observed is that the, the specimens that were round and machine were slightly better in terms of characteristics than the flat uh, samples. Uh, we consider that with such a thin geometry, flat samples are more representative. So uh, that's the reason why it's our standard, but it can be discussed. Uh, and also one of the results of this uh, test campaign on sample was that the surface finish could potentially uh, influence also a little bit the mechanical properties, but in a uh, small proportion because it's only uh, static testing. The CTE, the coefficient of thermal expansion, is a high requirement for observation and science. Here we are looking at aluminum, so our requirements was not so high. We were expecting to find something between 20, 21 ppm per degree, and that's exactly what we found. So it's okay, it's still aluminum, even with LBN technique. Um, then there was a, a lot of um, CT scan that uh, were performed uh, also by uh, ESA. Um, the, the, the samples uh, showed a lot of uh, defects um, between the, the edge of the defects and the core, probably uh, due to the scanning strategy, which is different from the edges than for, from the, the hatching in the, the core of the, the samples. Uh, both flat and round sample um, uh, had this, uh, this uh, similar uh, pores. Uh, we can say that maybe um, when we machine the round samples, uh, then we get rid of this uh, layer with more defects, and that explains why the machine round sample are a little bit higher in terms of characteristics. Um, we also had uh, some uh, fracture uh, uh, observation. You have some typical um, uh, pictures here. I will not detail a lot because we are uh, short time. Uh, the roughness, yes, it's important to say that the roughness 
uh, was quite good for all the parts, uh, less than five microns, um, with some discrepancies. Sometimes found two microns, other time five microns, but only after sandblasting. It was not as built uh, productions. Uh, then the mechanical uh, testing um, was done. Uh, so I'm not a specialist, but I try to explain. We first um, put uh, some uh, uh, dummy mass that you can see on one of the specimen that is uh, in the room uh, behind me. Uh, the, the, the dummy mass are there to represent the mass of the equipment. Then we put um, the part onto an interface. It is screwed onto the interface on the shaker. The shaker will be used in the three axes, X, Y, and Z. Uh, first, we uh, measure the low uh, level uh, response. We record this uh, response. Then we um, apply the loads that are uh, representative of the one encountered <coughs> with the, the launchers, uh, with uh, sinus and random uh, solicitation. It's uh, till uh, 30G in terms of uh, acceleration. And then we uh, do the, the low level again to compare the response as the one that we had before. And for all uh, the tested parts here, uh, the signal uh, was um, uh, the same. I mean, the, the part was uh, fully uh, 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 not degraded by the testing. The three uh, tested parts behaved exactly the same. And our specification uh, about the, the first mode uh, which has to be above 140 hertz was met. Oh, sorry, uh, was met um, for all uh, the parts. Uh, there is specific to say about this uh, design compared to the former one is that the damping is lower. Uh, that's one of the consequences of the removal of the the assembly and the bonding. Uh, so we need to take this into account probably in uh, next uh, design and calculation because the dumping is quite uh, low compared to traditional uh, solutions. Uh, this uh, testing on the shaker can be related to the CT scan uh, measurement. The CT scan is the 3D tomography uh, that allows us to uh, have an idea of the health of the material inside the parts. And uh, it's true that all, each of the parts that have been CT scanned uh, show some defects. Uh, we always have some defects with uh, LBM uh, uh, process, especially with aluminum, which is not so easy to uh, process. Uh, so we had uh, some defects. Uh, some of the parts had a lot of defects, other a little bit less, but we uh, always find some voids, uh, sometimes some uh, uh, inclusions, uh, small lack of fusion, some also some surface defect uh, due to shrinkage. Uh, we can say also that um, there are more defects located in the thicker zones, for example, in the, in the Y uh, uh, zones of the legs of the parts. Uh, the pores are mainly between 0.2 and 0.8, can be up to one millimeter at the maximum. Uh, so uh, what we can say is that uh, despite all these defects, uh, the mechanical testing is uh, really uh, good and meets our requirements. So that's uh, the good news. Uh, about the electric, uh, electrical conductivity, no surprise, the aluminum is still uh, conductive. And uh, also we have checked the, uh, one of the major requirements that we have in the space activity is about cleanliness. Here we face a, a process which is based on powders, so cleanliness is a challenge. Uh, we have some uh, specifications about this, especially for observation and science applications where you can find some mirrors that don't like particles. Uh, and uh, here, uh, after uh, traditional ultrasonic cleanings performed by the manufacturers, uh, we can see that we have a very uh, low contamination rate in terms of particles. It's, uh, it meets um, uh, widely our requirements. Uh, the thermal cycling, uh, yes, it was done uh, between the working temperature on the satellite for this part. It's minus 60 plus 60 degrees C. We performed 10 cycles, and we decided to check the geometry before and after cycling. And there, uh, here the, there was a kind of surprise because we have performed the stress relief uh, after manufacturing, and despite this stress relief, um, 
we can uh, observe that there are some deviations uh, between the measurement before and after thermal cycling, even with such a small range of temperature. The main deviations are between the two legs, uh, the above uh, side uh, of, the, of the part. The legs are, are moving like this. Uh, we have found some deviations on each of the four specimens, uh, sometimes from only 0.1 millimeter, but from one of them uh, till 0.6 millimeter. So that's not nothing. And um, this is a kind of surprise, and for now we cannot really explain, especially because we had also performed in the project some residual stress analysis, uh, just um, at, at two levels. First, uh, there was a simulation uh, done by uh, AZ about the um, manufacturing process itself, showing that there was no uh, so much residual uh, stress during the manufacturing. And also we did it uh, after the manufacturing with the ILL facility uh, in Grenoble. And we showed that the residual stress was always um, below uh, 50 MPA, so that's quite low. Uh, so we were a little bit surprised then to see that even if there is no specific residual stress after manufacturing, we can observe such a deviation with thermal cycling. Um, so then uh, the other analysis that were done in the project about this application case uh, were about uh, the life cycle analysis. I don't know if you're familiar with the notion. It's a kind of uh, recap of all the um, uh, impacts uh, in terms of uh, energy, health, and all this of the process. And the comparison between traditional process uh, for this kind of part and additive uh, is favorable to uh, LBM process. Uh, so uh, we also uh, did uh, with uh, Granta Design uh, cost-benefit uh, analysis, and it showed that uh, we had to amortize the cost of the tooling uh, for machining that was quite uh, expensive, and uh, this way the cost efficiency for this kind of part is reached only after four to five uh, parts, identical parts. And in this case, for this application, we have only two parts identical like this on each uh, satellite. Uh, and uh, the, um, the analysis uh, uh, takes into account the, um, the costs of the qualification, the manufacturing, all the non-recurring costs, as I said, the, the most expensive was the machining tooling. Uh, and there is a, a benefit uh, in our case linked to the weight because we can estimate that one kilo at the launching is about uh, uh, 20,000 euros um, uh, for, for the launching. So as a conclusion, we say that we can have a benefit with this uh, the technology, with uh, life cycle analysis favorable to LBM, cost efficient only in certain conditions and from a certain number of uh, specimen, depending really on the application case. Uh, due to, uh, thanks to the design, we had a lot of weight benefits we also, in this case, get rid of the assembly, uh, get rid of the dedicated uh, tool that was used uh, in the former uh, design. We also managed to get rid of the electrical uh, braid uh, to be bonded uh, afterwards. And we also managed to include the connecting uh, brackets into the design. So there is a lot of benefits uh, thanks to the design uh, that we could reach only with this technology, of course, no possibility with other technology. And uh, one of the major conclusions that I would like to enhance today is that even if we have uh, different uh, uh, suppliers, different building strategies, different machines, uh, different um, post-processing uh, procedures, uh, at the end, we have uh, uh, the, the same uh, performances and we can meet our requirements in terms of mechanics uh, for space uh, application. Uh, so uh, for us, uh, now the, the next challenge would be to be able to take into account these acceptable defects in our uh, design rules and to, in order to optimize uh, again uh, our design, uh, taking into account this new uh, uh, knowledge about the defects. But of course, we have to go further in the analysis of these defects and of what can be acceptable for which application and which mechanical loads. 
Uh, and the last word uh, is just to say that uh, this uh, project confirmed that the LBM technology is really promising for space applications, which is a, a very low theory market. We often perform some unique parts, so it's really the, the, the dream technology for us. Uh, we have used this same uh, approach for designing some other antenna support made with LBM and with aluminium, and some of them are already in orbit. Uh, these pictures are from uh, recent uh, satellites that have been launched uh, by uh, this year, uh, Korea Sat 7 and uh, Telcom 3S. And uh, we also will, will be happy at the end of the month to announce the launching of the largest uh, aluminum uh, parts uh, ever made for space application by LBM, which is uh, 480 millimeter hay. So it will be probably the, the new record. Uh, and now we target uh, not only mechanical parts, but uh, we would like to uh, enlarge our application case, um, putting together several functions in the, in the same parts, and also enlarge the material, and probably uh, design new materials for additive, especially high mechanical um, performance aluminum, for example, or uh, especially for space applications, some uh, low uh, dilatation materials. Thank you. If you have some questions. Any questions for Florence? I'd like to stress what she said at the end, that it's very promising. Mm -hmm. We have some defects that still meet your needs, mm -hmm. and all suppliers can supply from the first one. End user, I think that's very, very positive indeed. Yeah, that's a message about the robustness of the mm -hmm. process. Absolutely. We always want to control everything, but maybe it's not the only approach. Yeah. So any questions? Mm, probably not. Uh, at the end, we are to remain very careful because with space application, there is one thing that is specific. We cannot repair the satellites. <laughs> so we have a, a quality uh, level uh, requirements that is very really high. Uh, so as long as we have something that is not predictable in terms of behavior, we cannot accept it. The demonstration here was to say that um, even with some defects, uh, we can meet the requirements. Um, uh, we are probably not ready to accept everything. But this is a first step. This is a, a good, detailed analysis of the very optimized part. So it's a good end to end study. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, come on. Uh, two oh, questions. Well. The first one is Do you think that with respect to the damping characteristics, uh, Additive manufacturing can bring you some solution with respect to finding new designs that will improve the damping of your, of your part. Mm -hmm. And second question is, uh, as they are today, uh, would you be able to place the same sensor without any uh, shimming or with it, without any adjustment, or do you need to develop the adjustment of the, of, uh, for each of the, of the this bracket to be sure that you target the right direction. Uh, you mean in the assembly? Yeah. Uh, because of the distortion that yes. we have measured? Yes. Uh, usually we use some uh, some shimming to adjust the position. That's the reason why we have uh, done the measurement also after thermal cycling, just to know exactly where we are and to adapt the assembly with this. So yes, we need to adapt with some shims in case it's needed. Um, and I forgot your first question. It's about the damping, okay. Uh, yes, about the damping, it's clearly uh, lower than what we have uh, usually. So I guess either we have to find some solutions in terms of design, using uh, less uh, stiff uh, structure, or uh, maybe using lattices, or using a damping function in the other way. Um, or we will have uh, to introduce uh, some intermediate uh, assembly and not only a single block solution, which is not the main strategy with additive. But it's true that it's a new um, concern. Uh, we have always measured uh, low damping. For now, the equipment that were supported by these uh, um, parts made by AM uh, were not with a, a low shock uh, specification. But in case 
uh, we face some equipments with such requirements, we will have to adapt. It's true that it will be a challenge also in the future for this technology. We get rid of the assembly, but we lose the damping. Anything else? We move on. Thanks, Lawrence. Thank you. Um, we've got a, a change of agenda. Um, Sebastian Bremen.